Dollar. Hello, so much. Hi, How are you? COVID, I have to take your temperature. Oh, absolutely. Have you been exposed to anyone who had COVID? No. No. Okay, once upon a time I would hug you, but darling, right now, namaste. Namaste. Come with me. Sure. Thank you to the Haitian Ladies Network for allowing us to participate in this digital experience. Welcome HLN viewers. We are in the DC metro area of the US and under a COVID life. So we have taken many precautions to participate with you in this virtual experience. I'm Magdala Silva and here with me is Dr. Solange Vivens, a powerful woman. How do we define a powerful woman? This poem sums it up for me. A powerful woman need not be a politician. She need not be a scientist. She need not be an inventor. Neither does she need to be a entrepreneur. However, a powerful woman is she that builds a home, nurses, nurtures, and mentors tomorrow's leaders. We are with a powerful woman today who is a businesswoman, author, and nurturer of tomorrow's leaders. We are going to have some girl talk and words of wisdom about her new book, Girls Can Move Mountains, Rewriting the Rules of Female Entrepreneurship. Hello, Solange. Thank you for being with us today. Well, hello, Magdala, and thank you for coming to my home. Well, it's wonderful to be here. Now, I want to jump right in because there's a lot of questions that I have having read this book. And for example, I find that the title, from the title of the book, you know, people write books for many reasons, but there seems to be an underlining theme of Haiti in your book. Mm -hmm. You left Haiti when you were 19. Why is Haiti so prevalent for you? Well, actually, my life begins in Haiti. I was born in Haiti. I am a Haitian woman. As such, if I'm going to write a book about my life, I need to start from the very beginning, which is Haiti. I was born in Port-au-Prince. So, um, again, in your storyline, mm -hmm. I noticed that there are lots of uh, constructs. You use a lot of different constructs that seem to guide you along your way in your life. Mm -hmm. One construct was when I looked at the definition of your name, mm -hmm. and then I looked in the dictionary, it's not the same definition. For example, if you don't mind, I'll read to you. The way you define yourself in the book, the noun, Solange, widely known to be the coolest member of the human race, a person of extraordinary abilities, a superior being as the product of human evolution, synonyms, awe-inspiring, magnificent, wonderful, lovable, delightful, and crazy. Now, you self-defined yourself. You created your own definition. Well, let me explain. That's how I view me. So I describe me the way I view me. I see myself always in a positive light versus in a negative light. So any word that is an active word belongs to me. But the one that I love the most is that she's also a little bit crazy. And I love that quality because I will tell you, I could be with a group and I say something and a woman would say, only Solange Vivens can get away with this. So sometimes a little bit crazy Goes has a long way. <laughs> <laughs> But you know, the other thing I noticed, the other construct that you seem to have that guided you in your life was this turtle. And you're wearing an absolutely beautiful <laughs> turtle necklace. And in your book, you mentioned that the turtle has um, a meaning, an ancient meaning of feminine wisdom and strength. Talk to us about this fascination well, with turtles. Okay. So I'm going to start from the beginning, and then I'll talk about the strength of the turtle. Uh, and the, the, I met my husband, the gentleman who became my husband, and he was from Barbados. He took me to Barbados to meet his mother. And of course, he was showing off. 
So we went snorkeling with the turtle and the, the ocean in Barbados, the water is crystal clear. I had the most wonderful time and the turtle were big, beautiful turtles. So when we were going back to his mom's house, there was a gift shop. So we stopped at the gift shop and what did I see but a beautiful little book, a children's book, but on the cover was the most magnificent picture of a turtle. So I migrated to it. That was my first really introduction to the turtle. I migrated to it and I opened it. And in the center page, on one side was a turtle inside the shell. And on the opposite side was a turtle with the neck out, the, the legs, and that turtle was going. The turtle, you can tell, was very active. And under it, it says, in order for a turtle to move forward, the turtle must stick its neck out. Hmm. Now, if you see a turtle with that neck protruding, I stood there almost paralyzed. And I said, oh my God. Is that what I've been doing all my life is sticking my neck out? Mm -hmm. So I bought the little book mm -hmm. and there started my love for the turtle. So I started to read and the more I read about the turtle, the more I loved that animal. Now you talked about my book starting in Haiti. Let me teach you something about the turtle. It's almost like they have a map or a magnet mm -hmm. to take them back from mm -hmm. the place where they were born to hatch their eggs. Right. So I went back home. That's where I was born, and that's where I felt that I needed to start the book. Mm -hmm. Now, in I think it was 1992, I read a book by Les Brown, and the title of the book was Live Your Dreams. And after I read that book, I said, oh my God, I have got to write a book about me. I wrote the book for the people that will be like I felt in 1992 or 1997, whatever, when I read the book, I wanted to write a book. I pray that one day there is a little girl somewhere who would become whatever, a doctor, a nurse, a millionaire, if you will, and would say, I read a book. Girls can move mountains. Mm in 2000, in, in 2020. Mm -hmm. and, and it changed my life. And that book mm -hmm. changed my life. Wonderful, wonderful. So I, I wrote the book for those that came after me. Good, so the turtle taking risks. Yes. Going oh. out, and then also, I think it's very interesting that she always, or the turtle, always goes back mm -hmm. to where it came from, mm -hmm. which explains a little bit your fascination and the theme of Haiti consistently through consistently the book. Consistently throughout my life. But you know, I noticed another construct that I thought was pretty interesting, Saint Solange. Mm -hmm. For example, it seemed that that construct happened around 69, 70 years mm -hmm. young. So it doesn't matter what point you are in your life to be having constructs to help you in your journey. Well, life continues until you die. Therefore, you will continue to have construct as you grow older. The, the ability to recognize what it is that is helping you to move along, to move along with life. And when I talked about mountains, for example, in Haiti, life is nothing else but a series of mountains mm -hmm. that we keep climbing from infants, infant to adulthood. adulthood. Sure. So to me, we have to enjoy life. Work hard, play hard. Because if I'm gonna work hard, I have to enjoy the, 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 the fruits process. of your labor. I have to enjoy the fruit. So that's where my strength comes in. My strength came from Haiti. Well, on that note, again, you know, you begin the book with the story of a simple act of kindness that your father showed in Haiti. Mm -hmm. And the book draws parallels to acts of kindness, good fortune, and believing in luck. Mm -hmm. So did you make your luck? Were you lucky? 
or were the stars just shining down on you? When I discovered Saint Solange, I asked myself, you know, was, what was shining on me? Was Saint Solange in me from the very beginning? I will never know the answer because Saint Solange lived in the ninth century and I'm living in the 21st century. So I will put Saint Solange aside as far as luck and kindness is concerned. Mm -hmm. So now let's talk about luck. What is luck? To some, they don't call it luck. They call it blessing. Okay. Some people will say, oh, I was so lucky. And others will say, oh, I was so blessed. So those two words to me are, syn are synonym. And then I'm going to show you where, before I go to kindness, where luck fits. Now, what is success? Because if you're talking about luck, everyone said, oh, you are lucky. If you are lucky, it's something good that happened, something that you were successful at. So I define success first. What is success? I have my own formula. And my formula is success equals preparation plus opportunity plus luck. You need all three in order for you to be successful. You might be a PhD, well-educated, but you were so unlucky. You were never at the right place at the right time. Mm -hmm. Or there was never an opportunity for you. However, you could have the opportunity, but you were not prepared. Mm -hmm. So for me, success, you got to put all three together, mm -hmm. which is preparation, opportunity, and luck. Mm -hmm. So that's what success means to me. Mm -hmm. And luck plays a big role in that. But you, oh, did you want to continue? Yeah, but unfortunately, I was getting ready to say you have some people who are so lucky, they don't even recognize they are so lucky. You know, in life, if you're positive, you're going to see all the luck around you. You're going to see all the blessings. But if you're a negative person, the blessing is at your feet and you don't even see it. Mm -hmm. So you also, back to the Haiti. I think yes. that there's a, it's the Haitian Ladies Network for heaven's sake. So <laughs> I think that there's a lot of parallels when we look at your life experience coming from Haiti, but growing up in the U.S. and being a successful businesswoman. So, you know, you came from a modest family in Haiti. Mm -hmm. And you grew up in the U.S. So what experiences actually shaped you? Oh, my goodness. Um, what experience really shaped me? I look at where I come from. Very important. I looked at where I come from. I remember that maybe there was no food in the house. And my dad will say to my mother, stop boiling the water, I'm coming. And my dad will come back with five cents good. And my mother was the first executive in my life. My mother hmm. will take that $5 and she will stretch it. She will make breakfast, lunch, and dinner with that $5. So talking about, and when people talk about executive, that's my mother. Wow, you beautiful. See? So that's my beginning. Mm -hmm. And then I came to the United States mm -hmm. and I went to work as a nanny. Mm -hmm. And I'm looking at people who don't have to suffer, people who don't know what poverty is. Mm -hmm. And that opened my eyes. Mm -hmm. And I promised Solange that she's going to work very hard in order for her not to have to wait for her husband to come up with five dollars for her to be an executive. I promised myself that I was going to be an executive and I was going to do everything in my power. So did you visualize what you wanted, where you were going and how you were going to get there? Well, when you want something, not only you have to visualize it, you have to smell it, you have to taste it, you have to feel it. You have to use all your senses mm -hmm. when you really want something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Work, never kill anyone. Mm -hmm. You have to work for it. Sure. And what I tell young people is choose your friends very carefully because you might know where you want to go, but you get into the wrong crowd. And before you know it, you forget your goals. 
because you're following others. Mm -hmm. So to me, I was never a follower. I've always been a leader. Mm -hmm. I remember I was in school, Republic du Chili, on Haiti, and I had a very good friend, and uh, Claudette said in class, someone did something to her, she said, you would never do that to Solange Vivens. And I turned to her, I said, don't you ever call my name when you are dealing with other people. When you are dealing with me, you talk to me. And I, by doing that, I automatically intimidate the others so that they know not to play with me. They don't fool around with you. Not with me. But you know, another thing, a theme that was very interesting, again in the book, I mean, so much, so many pearls of wisdom here. You talked about, in fact, the structure of the book is sort of sweet and sour. In fact, you even have a chapter called Sweet and Sour. But the way that you build up the sweet and sour in your book, you almost make it sound like it's a delicacy. So talk to us about sweet and sour as it relates to life's challenges and life's possibilities. Life is never all sweet. Therefore, you cannot look at life and enjoy life when it's sweet. Because sweet and sour mean that there are going to be obstacles in life that you have to overcome. So how do you deal with the obstacles? Don't criticize the obstacles because they are part of life. So welcome them. When they come, I tell people, this is not where you start. It's where you end that matter. So sweet and sour is the story of my life. Mm -hmm. There is nothing that I am doing in life, nothing that does not have a little bit of a sour to spoil what I am doing. But I don't allow, the word allow, I don't allow the sour to really affect me. Mm -hmm. Let me give you an example. Just happened. Sure. Published the book. The book came out Valentine's Day. There was Mother's Day coming. I was booked on three different television channels to go talk about the book. Maryland University, bought a lot of books and I was going to speak to the faculty, the associate, the college students. I was on a trajectory with the book and COVID knocked at my door and pulled the red carpet from under me mm -hmm. and I fell flat on my face. Mm -hmm. All my appointments were canceled. Hmm. But I promised myself that I would not allow COVID to keep me down. Mm -hmm. Thus, I am here with you today doing an interview virtually on Girls Can Move Mountains. Mm -hmm. So it's not what happened to you, it's how you get out of it. Mm -hmm. How do you take the positive from the negative and turn it to your benefit? Mm -hmm. That's wonderful. When you moved from uh, New York to DC mm -hmm. with your husband, mm -hmm. Keith, uh, Keith what was that like to move from the workforce to the boardroom? Wow. Well, I, it, it takes time. Let me make that clear. You don't move from the workforce and the next day you are in the boardroom. I tell people, you have, we crawl, we walk, and then we run. So making it to the boardroom was not easy for me. I mean, I have described certain incidences in the book that were painful. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. I, I went to a church, a white church, and I sat down and there was someone behind me who kneeled, put her mouth next to my ears, and she said, can't you tell you don't belong? Mm. Mm. So that hurt. I could have turned around and really did something really bad to her. Mm -hmm. I would have been arrested and I would not be here in my beautiful home talking to you. Sure. So controlling oneself mm -hmm. towards the boardroom, it's not easy mm -hmm. because there's going to be again the word obstacle. Sure. But you have to know what you need to do. What are the steps you need to do to crack mm -hmm. this good old boys club, mm -hmm. especially in the healthcare field. Mm -hmm. All the nurses, all the laundry people, the housekeepers, probably 80 to 90% female. Right. 
Right. But when it comes to the executive Absolutely. for health care, the decision makers, the decision makers, yes. male women dominated. are down. Sure. It's totally male dominated. Sure. Especially, and especially in, in your men. era. In your <laughs> era. And in my time. Yes. This is for the sure. thing people cannot yes. understand. Absolutely. In the book, there is a chapter called How Did You Do It? Everyone wanted to know. I had two nurses that came to me and they said, Dr. Vivens, can you tell me how I can get my own nursing home? And I said, honey, it will take time, but come to my office, we'll talk. And when I started to talk, she said, well, I guess I will never own my own nursing home. Because I started to tell her what it, what it took, what it took sure. to get to that point. Yeah. So cracking the glass ceiling is, again, luck. But what happens when the glass ceiling breaks? Well, once, well, let me tell you. Once you, before you even get in, you have to walk the walk and talk the talk. You have to look like you belong in that boardroom right, right. before you even open the door to get in. Right. What I did when I finished nursing, I went to modeling school. I'm a graduate of Barbie's own school of modeling. So I went to modeling school. I modeled on Fifth Avenue. And in modeling school, we were told that you are seen before you are heard. Moon well of So it is very important to control what you say, what come out of your mouth, right. because you can't take it back. Mm -hmm. So appearance, attitude, knowledge, you need all of that. And leadership. And leadership. But did your leadership style evolve over the years? Does it evolve? Like everything else, you grow into it. You see, when you talk about leadership. But you see, people talk about leadership. Before you talk about leadership, I like to talk about the leader. Mm -hmm. Because you have to have the leadership skills, the leadership sure. abilities mm -hmm. in order for you to lead. Mm -hmm. So the first thing you have to do is to know how to lead you. Absolutely. If you Absolutely. can't even lead you, how can you lead other people? Absolutely. But I want to go back to something you said earlier about um, presentation. Mm -hmm. You wrote, <laughs> I learned you are seen first mm -hmm. and then heard. Mm -hmm. Therefore, a good impression starts with one's appearance. Mm -hmm. Then you reference Dr. Maya Angelou, the globally recognized poet, who you quote in your book, and I'm going to read the quote. Does my sexiness upset you? Does it come as a surprise that I dance like I've got diamonds at the meeting of my thighs? <laughs> That's a rather provocative reference for a book on entrepreneurship. What made you select that poem? Well, you know, that poem remind me that I am a woman. And at the same time, that poem, poem tells me that I am as good as or better than the other people around the table in the boardroom. So when I walk, in a boardroom, I am as smart as everyone else around me. Mm -hmm. Maybe the difference between us could be called anatomy. Mm -hmm. So I thought that fit for people like me back in my days sure. Sure. when you rarely see a woman in the boardroom. Mm -hmm. Where you had to fit in. When you had to fit in. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I did fit in, mm -hmm. in every aspect, mm -hmm. and I felt as good as or even better than my colleagues, mm -hmm. yet there was a difference between us. Mm -hmm. And I had to make sure that I remind myself that I'm as good as Diamond. Mm -hmm. And even in that fitting in, sometimes you have to sort of reduce your femininity because you have to adapt, maybe in a dark suit, maybe in conservative attire. Was there a little bit of that going on also? Yes, back then, you will see women in pantsuit, navy blue pantsuit. Mm -hmm. Almost you know, like a uniform. Almost like a uniform. Sure. I, sure. I will take Hillary Clinton, for example. 
if you notice, every time you see Hillary Clinton, she was mm -hmm. in a different pantsuit. Sure, sure. Well, she's about my age too. Mm -hmm. So it was fitted for us at that time. It was almost saying, I put my pants on the same way you put your pants on. Mm -hmm. I am as smart as you are. Mm -hmm. And I know that I am a woman. Mm -hmm. Yet, what I would tell younger people is that the way you appear says a lot about you. Mm -hmm. So in your adaptability mm -hmm. in the boardroom, mm -hmm. the reference to the poem is that you never forget that you're that actually you're a, woman. a woman. That's exactly right. And that right. it's a beautiful thing. And that womanhood is bringing humility and empathy and maybe concern, which is a voice that seldom was yeah. being heard around the boardroom. Around the boardroom. Wonderful. And, and now I'm happy to say that we are more women in oh, yeah. this day and age. Oh, yeah. We have made a lot of progress yeah. and there are more women in the boardroom right. compared to when I was in the boardroom. Sure, sure. And in those notes, let's go to the kitchen and have some coffee. Oh, I'd love some coffee. <laughs>
Very interesting is you talked about um, mindset. Mm. And you know, I know that when women are in business or business in general, there's ups and there's downs, right? And you, I know that you were in the battle. In the book, you talk about that you were in the battle for your business life on several occasions. And that's rather normal. Mm -hmm. But I was intrigued by the quote that you wrote, which was, I had always made it a point to handle negative events with a conqueror's mindset. Well aware, like mountains, life is a succession of peaks and valleys. I am really intrigued by that conqueror's mindset. Talk to me about that conqueror's mindset. Hmm. Conqueror's mindset, to me, is that you know where you want to go and you do whatever it takes to get there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's a win-win situation. Now, you know that there is win-win, there is win-lose, and there is lose-lose. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. The best position to be if you want to become a conqueror is to be in a win-win situation. Absolutely. So what I have done in my business mm -hmm. as a conqueror mm -hmm. is that I made every single employee feel important. So to, to be a conqueror is to have knowledge, to work very hard f for what you want, mm -hmm. and to understand that, that in order for you to win, you have to bring everybody else with you. That's sort of a humbling attitude with a word like conqueror that sounds to be very aggressive, but it's not really aggressive. There's a certain amount of humility in being a good conqueror. Very much so. You right. brought sort of a sharing and a giving and right. appreciation and value of your employees, and that led to your success. So what would be the three or four takeaways that you would share with us today in terms of that journey and that experience? Oh, well, let me see. Attitude is number one. Sure. Attitude is so important mm -hmm. because your attitude can make you or it can break you. Break you, for sure. So I would tell my younger generation, my, my, my younger sisters, um, to be very careful how you behave and how you carry yourself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What comes out of your mouth cannot get back in. Mm. Once it's out there, it is out. So control what comes out of your mouth. So mm -hmm. that's one thing that I will tell them. Sure. Um, be kind, because you read my book. Mm -hmm. You know in my book I talk about kindness. Sure. To be kind mm -hmm. and to understand, and that's very important now that I recall. Let me, let me, let me tell you. Um, we all, we all are born the same way. We all are born from a woman. I have yet seen a man give birth to a child. Mm -hmm. So we all are born the same way, but we all are not born in the same world. Mm -hmm. And people need to understand that. Mm -hmm. We are not born in the same world. Mm -hmm. I was born in a world in Haiti, and then I came to the United States. I went to work as a nanny in, some, in a white family home, taking care of two kids. They had somebody to cook the food. They had somebody to clean the house. They had somebody to do the laundry. And here I am in that environment, in that world, mm -hmm. that is different than my world. Sure. So when I was growing up, I grew up in a different world than those two kids that I was the nanny. Yet, we were all born the same way. Once I became aware that there was the haves and the have-nots. Right, right. And I know I was one of the have-nots. I decided that I was going to be one of the haves. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I worked very hard to climb my mountains. And when I can't climb them, I just moved them to make a little crack for me to just penetrate, mm -hmm. you see. Mm -hmm. And that's how I cracked the good old boys club mm -hmm. in healthcare, mm -hmm. you see. Mm -hmm. And then once you find that space, you make it yours. And what I did is that I had pledged to me that I was going to be one of the halves. Mm -hmm. And by the time I was married, I had a nanny for my son before I even gave birth. So did you, you visualize what you wanted? A hundred percent. You have to, but 
again, exposure. Sure, absolutely. Exposure is very important. Absolutely. That's why I tell, I tell people, do the best you can to expose your children to where you would like to see them. Even if you are not there yourself, mm -hmm. see if you can expose them. Mm -hmm. If I, and I believe that, if I didn't go into that beautiful home, if I didn't go into that environment, maybe I would not have accomplished everything mm -hmm. that I have accomplished. Mm -hmm. You know, I took a bite of that apple and I said, I'm going to eat all of it. You're going to eat all of it. So that was a good <laughs> reference point. So visualization, very important, right? The conqueror's mindset, very important. Mm -hmm. Confidence, yes. right? Very yep. important. Managing power, yep. humility, empathy, those are really very important and words, especially to attitude. 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 But so we talked a lot about what people should do. Okay. So what would you suggest for women in general, but maybe Haitian women in particular, that they should never do? Wow. They should never do. Well, I would say never doubt yourself. Okay. You see, self-doubt is the worst thing to have. No matter how bad things are, there is always a hair of positivity in the situation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you have to understand that in life, we all have our cross to carry. Mm -hmm. And it is that important that you figure out how to carry your own cross. Mm -hmm. Never complain about your cross. Sure, sure. Just know how to carry it. Sure, sure. So what would Dr. Solange Vivens in 2020 tell her younger self before she takes that plane from Haiti to New York? There was a mentality back then. Now, mind mm -hmm. you, I don't know what's going on now because I left in the 60s. Sure. You know, and I was about 19 years old when mm -hmm. I left Haiti. But the mentality was that the moment the airplane land at, like, at Kennedy Airport and you stepped out, you become a millionaire. Mm -hmm. That was the Haitian mentality back then, right? Really? And I remember people used to say, well, there must be a tree at Kennedy Airport that the moment you go in, it's a money tree that you just <laughs> grab money. Wow. But I will tell her it is not true. Sure. But what I will tell her mm -hmm. that you can, in the long run, become a millionaire, providing that you don't mind working hard for it. Right. You go to school, do whatever you have to do, work hard, because hard work is not a prerequisite for dying. You have to visualize things. Visualize. You mm -hmm. dream about it, you mm -hmm. visualize it, and then you take that vision, you turn it into your goals. Mm -hmm. You take your goals, you turn it into a plan. And then you take your plan, you put it into action. Mm -hmm. And then, once you put it into action, the rest is gravy. Yeah, but you gotta walk into it with confidence. You have to walk into it with the right mindset. Right? I agree. And then you have to have all of those things we talked about, the empathy, the humility, because if you're doing something that requires business and other people, you're going to have to bring them along. Exactly. And you see, when we talked about climbing a mountain, yeah. this is what it's all about. Sure, sure. It's all climbing a mountain. On IETOD, they all want time. time. They all want time, all lot more time. So, you are even up there to want time, you got a lot. No. Pour monter dans tête l'autre là, c'est descendre pour descendre pour remonter encore. Non, c'est ça même, c'est ça même. This is même. what life is all about. Yeah, you go up and down, hit the mountains until you reach right. the last right. one. Peaks and valleys. Peaks and valleys. Absolutely. Solange, vous avez une vie qui est très riche. Qui ça que vous avez aimé que nous songez de l'expérience que vous avez fait dans la vie? Ah ben, le moment qui vient arriver pour moi, c'est que je garde la tête, moi, moi, je suis mm -hmm. sorti, et puis moi, je suis que je suis et je travaille du en pile mm -hmm. pour m'arriver côté mien. Je suis mm -hmm. pile de bagaille qui arrive, que si je suis écouté, je ne peux pas jamais avancer. Donc, ça me fait. Et moi, je suis de me faire mes yeux, je ne pas me faire yo oui. Je ne pas occuper. Je ne pas occuper. Je ne pas Et je ne pas que je suis la douleur en silence. Oui, douleur en silence, c'est là que je ne pas qui fait mal. Mais 
pas quitter le dominé ou mm -hmm. parce que ou gon but mm -hmm. ou kon koto vle aller mm -hmm. so pour cela quel que soit sacré volant ou et ou gon vision mm -hmm. ou wè koto vle aller hein mm -hmm. ou continuer travail du mm -hmm. jusqu'à ce que ou arrive dans but ou dans mm -hmm. koto te mm -hmm. vle aller hein mm -hmm. mm -hmm. et so c'est une impression que ces modèle bagay sa yo qui kembe qui mm -hmm. fait que mm -hmm. Gende l'aime pas et m'a pas give up, m'a pas comme dit give up et en créole et t'as comme d'a dit m'a pas lagé tout de même, m'a dit bon, c'est fini, c'est fini. fini. Mm -hmm. Bah, l'autre trois loups, moi, quoi ça a trois loups, moi, pas qu'à porter. Ouais, 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 ouais. Vous comprenez? Ouais. So, ou prend douleur là quand on a énergie. Oui. Et puis après ça, ou vin gagne un but, et puis ou dit que malgré oui. le fait que m'a vin gagne un bail qui sous route, moi, qui sous chemin, non, qui peut-être qui pas fait chemin facile oui. mais on va continuer à avancer quand même oui et puis quand il y a tout une série de bagages qui arrive où faut qu'on comment pour pour manager les pour surmonter les pour surmonter absolument et moi même quand je l'aime pas elle en trop pour moi mal fait jardin sur le mal fait jardin on fouille en trop tout pas fouiller trop on mettait toutes bagages qui pas bon là dedans c'est ça pas bon yo m'enterrer tout dans trois et puis me couvrir non ça c'est un bon un bon bagage c'est un bon bagage et mon gros l'autre bagage que me fait me quand jouer tennis so chaque fois me frappe tête boule là son tête au monde m'a frappé non mais on comprend mais c'est tête boule là m'a frappé non visualiser boule là tu vois puis et puis et puis me font coup de tennis bam ouais ça pour servir avec énergie ou canaliser c'est oui. non côté qui oui. pas pour faire friction avec personne Exactement. mais que là ou même reparaît oui. sous scène ou reparaît avec plus force ah, reparaît avec un pile énergie énergie et force mm -hmm. et le fait que moi retirer et ça pas de bon m'enterrer mm -hmm. le fait que m'enterrer là ah, il y a ça. plus énergie c'est ça au mm -hmm. il y a plus énergie mm -hmm. et, et, et concept ça idée ça façon ça m'enseigner l'en pile ba employé mio mm -hmm. parce que me te kon garde en pile ka perd du travail yo mm -hmm. y a plein de perdre du travail yo pour grimper si pour être yo te une mauvaise attitude pour mm -hmm. comprendre mm -hmm. so ça m'enseigner yo me dit comme ça que l'on supervise fait un bagage ko ou supervisor qui en toi oui mm -hmm. et puis qui monde qui perd du travail c'est ou même c'est ça au comprendre mm -hmm. so les comme ça me dit yo fait ça le dou faire à le faire li l'on fin de faire li ou autant des gens parlent à voir oui ou ouais je ne parle à voir il faut mal oui mais à nos bateaux non jouer même c'est bien jouer dans bateau non puis flocher so les qu'on sort sorti ou à toute force ou non demain ou pas quitter le domino demain après demain ou bien t'as rien toute bagarre ça y est sorti dans non ou même premièrement mademoiselle qui t'es parlé l'aide avec quoi les gars t'as même oublié s'il t'es parlé l'aide avec quoi so qu'on y a demain ou à nos offices là et pour chita gentiment mm -hmm. et pour quitter le connait qui j'en t'ai formal j'en t'ai parlé avec ou hier ça son maîtrise de soi oui parce oui. que tout temps gain action gain réaction so si que ou vinn gain façon que on monde faire un mauvais gens avec ou mm -hmm. pas besoin bay mon nan même réaction mm -hmm. nous trouver que ça on dit c'est des bagages de de chef-d'œuvre parce que ou capable prendre ou mettre le fouet en terre toute énergie négative là toute frustration qu'on gagne là ou mettre le dans toi ou couvre toi et puis qu'il y a là où son monde qui tout neuf non mon retire c'est des habits des habits et ou tout neuf ou tout neuf et pour en forme et puis l'ol ouais là là mais mes amis qui j'en fait que ou tellement en contrôle parce que me connais qui j'en que ne t'ai quitté là là hier mais moi ou maîtriser ou même ou maîtriser situation ça c'est c'est bon chapitre dans livre là on connaît chapitre là dit moi on ta rien mais connaît comment le faire faire tout ça le faire on chapitre dans livre là même oh qu'on pas que me pas dire ou pendant que m'a parlé comme ça voilà m'a fait traduire livre là en créole oui ouais on t'entend ça on t'a dit ça oui m'a fait traduire livre là en créole pour tout le monde en Haïti Kalil pour bénéficier oui non ça apprendre de lui ouais très bon très bon let's go to the living room sure that will be great
Arch Solange. We are here in the nation's capital on the Washington Mall between actually the Capitol and the Washington Monument. What a gorgeous day in Washington, D.C. It is absolutely beautiful, a little sunny, but a gorgeous day. Thank you for being here and sharing some questions or some conversation with us. Solange, I'd like to talk to you a little bit about um, self-identity as we're here in the nation's capital. How do you identify? You are a recognized businesswoman with over 800 employees, recognized nationally throughout the continental U.S. Do you identify as a African American, as a black woman, as a Haitian American? And are they the same things for you? Well, why don't I start by saying, yes, I agree with you. It is a beautiful day in the nation's capital. It is a day that the Lord has made. So let us rejoice and be glad. Then I will talk about self-identity. To me, it's very important that we do not allow other people to identify us and that we identify ourselves. For me, I was born in Haiti. I am a black woman. My ancestors are African and I am an American citizen. So I will answer you by saying I identified myself with all of the above. Haitian born, African American, black, female. That's who I am that and proud of it. And proud of it. So let's talk a little bit about intentionality. There are probably some women that might be looking at this uh, in Haiti saying that their obstacles are far, far more complex than the way that we perceive them ourselves and that their challenges are more difficult. What would you say to that? I would disagree. I would say that obstacles exist all over, that it's not only for Haitian women, but when you are going through it, you think it's only you. You think you're the only one with the problem. So I would reassure them that life is a series of mountains. You see, you have to climb them. You have to arrive at your destination. You have to know where you're going. So the obstacles are in our way, but we need to know how to move them. When you read the book, the name of the book is Girls Can Move Mountains. Sometimes that mountain is so tall that you realize there is no way you can climb it. But you know what? All you have to do is to try to push it a little bit, find a crack, and get yourself inside. And once you are in, it's up to you at that moment to make it work for you. Mgade le modèle décision sa yo, tant qu'on un kasav, tant qu'on un pay. Vous comprenez? So, kou retire un mosso, li pa ou encore, non? exclusion de personne c'est inclusion de tout le monde, y compris garçon, parce que l'on a parlé de nation. C'est tout le monde. Il y a des femmes qui font des bagages extraordinaires, il y a des femmes qui ont un pile potentiel. Et si vous êtes capable vraiment de mettre ensemble, vous pouvez devenir un contributeur à la solution, hein, qui est un contributeur qui est extrêmement important. Oui. Et mais ça qui fait nous parler de femmes plus, c'est parce que les femmes, c'est derrière elles, elles sont arrêtées. Elles n'ont pas de place dans le bureau. Hein? Mm -hmm. Yo te, yo te mette yo nan plas yo, se ret la kay, le veti moun fè manje, fè lesiv. Mm -hmm. Kounye la san ap di, ke fom pou yo rekonet ke yo gon seri de valeur, ke yo ka kontribye, si nou tout fom met tet nou ansam. Mm -hmm. Yo nan politik, yo nan biznis, oh, oui. yo nan euh, de tet de pont de tout kalite entreprise, nan tout patou. Exactement. So, kompetans la li sorti de andan kay la, kounye li rentre nan sosyete a tout bon. So, nous voulons que vous venez vraiment organiser et nous croyons ça et puis c'est tendance ça même aux États-Unis. Oh oui. Vous comprenez? Oh oui. So, nous t'arrêmes un ouais succès ça. So, en parlant des États-Unis, we're going to be in the most important election of our lifetime. What? Why do you think this 
is so significant? Why do you think this election is so significant? What a good question. We are really living in a rough time right now in the U.S. This election is very important to all of us. One thing that I tell people is that you can fool us once, shame is on you. Fool us twice, shame on us. Mm -hmm. And I'm saying this to say we need to learn that we have values, that there are certain things that we should not be accepting in 2021, and that what we need to do is to make sure that we exercise the one right that we have in making changes is to vote. Right now, there's nothing we can do, unfortunately, in the United States at this point. But sure enough, we, can, we have power with the vote. So if we all vote, we might see the other side of the mountain. So the ownership of the change we want to see is basically in our hands. In our vote. In our That's vote. That's our power. The power is in the vote. Thank you so much, Solange. <laughs> it was a pleasure to be with you today. So this has been an absolutely wonderful time spent with you, Solange. Again, we are here on the National Mall in the heart of Washington, D.C. on an absolutely gorgeous day. I want to thank you again for spending time with us and sharing your pearls of wisdom. Thank you for spending time with me. It was such a pleasure. It was my pleasure. <laughs> thank you. Well, we had a wonderful time today. Thank you all for joining this special HLN event. Special thanks to Dr. Solange Vivens, author of Girls Can Move Mountains, Rewriting the Rules of Female Entrepreneurship, who opened up her home and shared her journey with us. I hope this time together was insightful and inspirational for each and every one of you and that you were able to add some tools to your toolkit to ignite your power. If you have not yet read the book, I highly recommend that you get a copy. It's being translated in Creole and will be available in Haiti by the end of the year. It will also be in an audible format. Us two girlfriends had a wonderful time together right outside the nation's capital and we were glad that you were able to join us. Don't forget to use your power in your vote. Thank you, et à la prochaine.